Hi, my friends. Kim here, Abundant Life Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's see. We are here. <laughs> it's Monday. It's Mystery Mystic Monday. What we're doing today is catching up on some of the cases that we covered on Mystery Mystic Mondays and one case from my Maritime Mysteries. So I wanted to do like a roundup of different cases. We will explore some of the cards that came up. I will be also reading excerpts or reading like little short bits from articles to bring you all up to speed on the cases. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to go ahead and get the intro here started. And welcome. Welcome to... Hi. So welcome to my new subscribers, my new viewers. I appreciate you all joining me. And I also want to give a big shout out to my old time subscribers who've been with me for a while now. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, we've got a lot to cover today. If you have any questions, any comments, just you know what to do. Drop it in the There we go. Now you should be able to hear me. It was telling me I'm and you're muted. Great. <laughs> okay. All right. So I gotta first say this. Um, there will be some sensitive subjects we're talking about today. So just understand that going into watching this particular live stream. Like if you have a weak stomach or if you're not up to hearing about certain updates with some cases, then maybe hop off and we can catch up in another video for another day, okay? I have to say that, that some of the updates kind of haunt me. I'll just say that. All righty, all righty. Hi, Jackie. Hello. I cannot wait to hang out with you soon. So thank you for joining me today. Oh my goodness. And thank you for the support of the decks, the true crime deck, the my the your career and money oracle, the decks I've created. Hi, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yay! Hi, friends. Sorry about no sound. It it was saying my mic was detached, but it wasn't. It's attached. It's attached. Yeah, we are going to have fun. Thank you, Deanna, for Blue Crescent Tarot. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Miss Moonlight. How are you doing? Hello, friends. I'm so excited you all are here with me today because let me tell you, let me tell you, we got a lot to cover. And I'm going to try to be as fast as I can be. <laughs> Lickety split. So I'm going to share my screen, make sure, let me see, doing good. I have a day off. Isn't the day off just lovely? I, I gave myself a day off yesterday. Um, Sundays, I try to give myself a real day off and it was nice. Um, I pamper myself. I pamper my daughter. We took like long, luxurious baths. I deep cleaned, washed her hair and wash mine. It was just a lovely day yesterday. I, I could probably use one more day off. One more day. <laughs> All is good with me, I have to say. All is good. 
Thank you. <laughs> yes, indeedy. How are you doing, my friends? Okay. I am going to share the screen. Let me make sure I know what I'm doing here. I'll be like looking all kinds of crazy. <laughs> okay, so we got quite a few cases. I'll try to cover as many as I can within a reasonable amount of time. I don't want to keep you all here today. I do plan to timestamp the uh, video afterwards so that way those who are watching the replay can go hit up the different cases, right? I will probably be taking the next Monday's off. We'll see if like there's some pressing case that I must do a reading on. But I would like to circle back to some of the cold cases that people have asked me to explore and that, you know, I want to take my time with those. And I also am working on stuff um, behind the scenes. So life is lifing and I have to account for that. So settle in, friends. Get comfy. Get your decks out because sometimes these conversations spawn different intuitive hits that, you know, it helps to have your deck around. You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. It was, it was just everything. It was exactly what I needed. It was exactly. Hello. Hi. Thank you for joining me today. Joining us. This is a little, this is a little community over here. What we do over here is a little different and you all are very much a part of it with me. I'm not going down without all my peeps. <laughs> so let's get into it. So I do, before we talk on some cases, there were two cases that I've covered that still need help, that still needs tips. And I wanted to talk about those briefly. The first is Miguel Mack. And I did a reading on his case, I think it was March. Yeah, it may have been March. Uh, like, yeah, March of this year. And one of my dear Poise to Leap Kofi members uh, asked me to do this reading because this affected um, a First Nations young man, indigenous young man, and not much was getting out. And it's in Canada. So I have a hard time finding a lot of information on what's happening in that region for some reason. I don't know if it's because there's some kind of like information wall up because I'm in a different country. I don't know. But from what I can tell, he's still missing. And I may be revisiting his case to do a more detailed Tarot reading in the near future. Um, it's just really tragic because you could just feel the heartbreak of his mom, his loved ones, the community. And it's really hard to tell what's going on with the police investigation. And from what I can understand, it's like huge wilderness out there. So like, I'm just worried. So it, just putting it out there, Miguel Mack is still missing. Any tips? His mom said on her face on the Facebook page, the search Facebook page, no tip, big or small. Even if you think it's a rumor, report it. Um, so there's that. Okay. Um, we also have still Rachel Morin. Um, the suspect is at large. He is still running around, and and that is very very scary. So. Um, what I was appreciating that her, like the attorney for her family were doing was they uh, were putting out reward posters or requests for information posters in Spanish and, you know, publishing all of that in places and spaces where there may be Spanish speaking folks who may know something, heard something. They've raised the um, reward to 30000 now. So any information, I would imagine any tip, big or small, nothing crazy. <laughs> Don't send in tips that are like, you know, it's one thing. And, and some people send in psychic premonitions and tips like that. But to me, I feel like it needs to be like a concrete tip. You know what I mean? You know? So anyways, report any tips. 
one of the main reasons I do this segment on my channel is missing persons and mysterious deaths are something that's near and dear to my heart. I really just gravitated towards doing those types of readings. And it's really like hugely necessary to get the word out. That's why I like to talk about them is to share their story, share it as respectfully as I can. Sometimes it feels like I'm in a trance when I'm doing these readings. And I don't know exactly how it's coming out or sounding, but it's always my intention and hope to be super respectful, all the while raising awareness. Like Miguel Max, I have not really seen anything on YouTube about his case. And so sometimes it feels like we're like the lone people, the readers and the psychics out here who are talking about these cases. So, yeah. So up first, we're going to talk about Charlotte Thena, um, who was kidnapped out of upstate New York. But before I do that, I just want to check on your comments. Okay, there you are. Okay, so I was called to do that reading like Sunday night um, going into Monday morning. And I was just like, I don't, I'm just curious. I'm not always a fan of doing children's cases um, for a variety of reasons that you can imagine. But this one struck me. And the kidnapping suspect has been arrested, thank God. But I wanted, to, I wanted, I didn't like to even have his little picture up here, but I needed to show you all something that came up in the reading about him, this dude. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I'm going to read from the, um, article. Cause I think y'all, y'all should hear some of this. You probably know this case, right? A uh, little girl, nine-year-old. We, um, a couple of the viewers or subscribers, we were like Charlotte's web. Something came up in the reading and was like, oh, Charlotte's web. So. I'm so grateful that she was found live and returned to her family. That is such a blessing. Okay. It's a blessing of epic proportions. Let me see. Is it not sharing? Floating. I know New York Post is sometimes kind of like a rag, but every now and then, just like the sun, when it comes to these true crimes, cases. They seem to get their act together for the most part. Other times it's like, you better vet your information when you look at the New York Post. Nevertheless, um, I'm just going to read some excerpts here that I found interesting. The title of this one is Charlotte Cena's accused kidnapper targeted her because of late grandfather's multimillion fortune, according to the ex-girlfriend of his. So just understand that. This is the source. The man accused of kidnapping nine-year-old Charlotte Cena at an upstate New York park and holding her for ransom was reportedly after her late grandfather's fortune, according to his ex-girlfriend. Craig Ross Jr., age 46, was charged. Can you believe that? He is 46 years old. I'm 43. And I'm like, oh, my God. He looks like he has been through it. Right. God. Um, no shade, but whoa. Craig Ross, 46, was charged earlier this week with kidnapping the young girl who was found in a closet inside his trailer after she vanished on a bike ride while camping with her family. Charlotte's grandfather, Patrick Cena, has successfully sued the small town of Greenfield, New York, in 1998 for a sledding accident and was awarded $2.2 million. Um, and that's what the Daily Mail had first reported. Charlotte's grandfather, Patrick Cena, has successfully sued the small town of Greenfield. Okay, I already read that. He died, though, in 2015. Now, the accused girlfriend or partner, former partner, 33-year-old Amanda Priest, told the outlet she believes that Ross demanded $50,000 from the Cenas because he knew about the settlement money, as it was common knowledge, like in the community, like they knew like her grandfather 
have some money from the settlement. Um, so then his former girlfriend or former partner says, I think that's why he held her ransom. He was hoping to get some of the money because he's struggling financially, she said. Here's his picture. Craig Ross charged with kidnapping. And she then goes on to say that kind of money would set him up for around four or five years. He's never wanted to work. He's always wanted to find people to mooch off of, whether it be girlfriends or making his mother feel bad because his multiple sclerosis is so bad. She added referencing his condition, allegedly, right? Ross had reportedly fallen behind on tax payments for a property less than two miles from Charlotte's home, forcing him to move back onto his mother's property where he lived in the trailer. And she goes on to say that Ross the accused, was evil and believes he followed Charlotte and her family, planning the snatching for some time. Hence why we kept thinking back to Charlotte's web when we saw the spider in the Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle reading, which I'll show you all in a moment. There's this old trailer. Wow. He had been following her family. He knew where they lived, she said. He put a tarp over the windows a few months prior so I feel like he had been planning it for a while at a priest. He has the he has the patience for messed up things like that. To go to the campsite where they were at, to know where they lived, and to go to the park when they are there. He definitely had this plan, she told the paper. There's Charlotte and her beautiful family. He's the type of person where he pre-plans and it can be months ahead to do something. Priest was granted a restraining order against Ross in 2017 after he grabbed her by the throat with both hands and threw her across the room, according to court documents obtained by the Daily Mail. She claimed he terrorized her while they were together. Okay, I think, I think that's it that I'm going to share. And you all know he was caught because he placed with his hands, placed a ransom note in the Cena's mailbox, which I thought was crazy. Like, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is show you some of the cards that came up in the spread that I did in like, like earlier the day of Monday. Sometimes I do these readings, you all, and I'll admit it on there. I'll tell you the time. It'll be like one o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, uh, two, sometimes. Mm, lately, I've been trying not to do it as late as three, the witching hour. <laughs> so it is, yeah, it is. It's so sad. And it's like, if I could just speak to a few of you, even if only 30 of you watch. There's 30 people who watched and looked and, you know, the little algorithms kind of talk to one another. So if there's ever a flurry of information that comes about, people could be like, oh, yeah, look, you know, it's just important to raise awareness. I would hope that if I were missing, God forbid, there would be some concern in a search for me, you know, so the same goes for of the people, you know, our friends, our family, even strangers, community members. She was found, thank God. And so I, at first I was like, someone was like, should I post this video today? And then I kept getting this urge to post it. And it was like, no, you need to post it soon because I posted it like in the afternoon, I published the video on Monday by, Monday night, they had late reporting or breaking news that she had been found. And it was like, and then they showed his picture. I was like, oh my God, thank God they found her. Right? 46. You're 43? Oh my goodness. Oh, we're the same age. There must be something kidsmith about it. But yes, he's 46. Now he does have allegedly a medical condition. That maybe ages him. I don't know, but he looked like he'd been through it. He looked like he'd been through it. 
All right, so now I'm going to share with you the, um, let me grab it here. And we're going to go back and look at the cards. As soon as it lets me share the screen. So yeah, they found her. Holla freaking Luya. The only reason I'm showing you this case is yay, let's celebrate some good news finally that a child has been found alive. She did go to the doctor that night, you know, the hospital to be checked up. And so we, I mean, this could have all sorts of effects on her as she goes forward into life, you know, but she's been found. Oh my God. So now I'm going to get to, sorry, I want to share with you the, stop it. If I'm quiet, it's only because I'm trying to concentrate to um, <laughs> share my screen, like multitasking. So, a couple of cards that I wanted to point out. Highly attractive. Again, no shade. He's not the highly attractive one. The highly attractive uh, people in this instance is that beautiful family and beautiful little Charlotte. And then the card next to it, we have balding or shaved head. He is balding. I still don't understand where the black and I mean, he does have long hair, but I don't see where the black hair comes in. Maybe one of the women, you know, it's, it's, isn't it interesting to you how his ex-girl or ex-partner knows all these details about like the tarp? I mean, I don't know. I just found that interesting. Like, how do you know that? Next card is unsightly. Now, this is the card that made me be like, I need to share this with my peeps. This card right here, the unsightly card. So this is from my defining characteristics oracle, these cards here. And then elderly or mature. And he for sure is much older than Charlotte. He looks much older than us. So then we also, we had online, apartment, homebound, workspace. It was like spirit kept wanting to say, like, near home, this man is homebound. Um, he's doing this out of motivation with his, you know, property taxes. He's been searching online. There was more online cards that popped up. Showed you. Oh, and he's the nightclub. I thought of. He needs to take a gamble. And that this, these cards come from my sacred spaces oracle. Then over here, we have internet messaging, social media. So he probably been following, like going through public records, like, you know, counting that man's coins. It's just really upsetting if that's really the case. Like he did ask for a ransom. So it does seem to be money motivated um, why he took little Charlotte. But uh, we got a rest caught. So that was exciting to get. And we got zero to 15 kilometers. So he was very close. He actually, he only lived, what, a couple of, within one to two miles. Or the property that I think fell behind is only a like a couple of miles at most from the family, from Charlotte's family. But then what threw me off a bit was the accomplice, female suspect. Now, it could be sometimes people, when this car comes up, people are unwittingly helping him, maybe not wittingly, like going in and knowing that they're helping him after the fact or during or before, but maybe unwittingly supporting him. Um, he he asks you to go to the store and buy some, a certain uh, supplies and you get them. For example, the tarp, right? Um, maybe he was doing a bunch of traveling around, moving here and there country wilderness. He took her from a park, a camping ground. 
plant, two to four people, small intimate group planned. And at first I thought this was talking about some sort of like, um, you know, like group of people who are gang, not a gang, but a small like little group of people who were committing crimes together. But now it looks like next to the planned card, what it's telling me is that he was planning to target this little family. And then we got the kidnap card. That was trippy. What scared me was the strangulation card and this card here, emotional ties, the intimate relationship um, that he could have threatened her, threatened harm to her. He could have actually tried to do this. Who knows? Um, justice, yay. So whenever that card comes up, I'm always heartened by that. But then we go over here to the this one, this time Oracle. And we got Monday, tonight. And I think I even said in a reading, like, well, maybe we might even hear something tonight or today or something like that. And sure enough, sure enough. Then June, he could have been plotting this since June. And it looks like he's going to be in court in November. I think like his first like official court appearance is in November. So that's what we got there. Get there. I love justice, right? Justice. And now sometimes that justice card comes up, and especially in these type of true crimey kind of decks, and it's not the kind of justice that we would prefer, but it is nevertheless justice, you know? So I wanted to be able to open up with some good news. Little Charlotte has been found. Did I take you all through? Oh, hold on. Oh, here we go. I wanted to take you all through the Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle. A lot of people always ask me about that deck. Still available for sale. You can buy a larger poker size. I have the little tiny, tiny um, cards. And I have the bloody edition um the red one that's poker size so i have two editions of the mildred paint secret pocket oracle let me show you here's this red i have that one that one's a nice good size and they make that in the uh find you they make it this one this little one and the poker size. So if this is too tiny for you, you could get this handy, handy size. I love that deck. Been loving it for years. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen so we can look at something real fast. Why can't I share it? Come on with it. Okay. Okay, so spider and and I was like thinking like a web, like he, like, this is what told me like a web. And then the book, I kept like, he studied her, studied the family. If what his ex-partner is saying is true, then he's been plotting and planning this. Like this was just, you know, ace in the pocket or something like that. Um, and then that he kind of got in her way is what kept coming up. Iceberg stop right here. Right. That kept like, like he kind of like stood in her way. And I think they say he's like six, four. He's a tall man. I don't know how big he is, but he's tall. So I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing the details of what happened. If we ever, I hope we do eventually get those details. Cause it was like, whoa. So we can make sure that we keep a close, close eye on our kids. It's really scary. Um, yeah, family members. That could be his family members or her family members. His family members, like his son is like, he, re he wrote off his dad. Like he doesn't care about his dad. We got the accessory after the fact. Debt. We got the debt card. And he is in debt with the county or I guess whoever he pays his state taxes or their property taxes to. Motive. Jealousy. 
He moved her, the boat. He could have threatened her man and regret and remorse. I bet he's remorseful now. I bet he's remorseful now. Yes, indeedy. You have the deluxe edition. You haven't used it yet. What's stopping you? This is the the season. Tis the season to use <laughs> to use the Build Your Face Seeker Pocket Oracle. Love this deck so much. This is one of my older indie decks. It's so little, and when it was released, it was like only a handful. And so, what the creator would do is like release ten more or two more, and then eventually it built up to like what eighty some odd cards. And then I edged it in black. I have to occasionally re-edge it because I wear it out so much. And then I have this one which I really actually do enjoy using. I thought I worried about getting a second edition because I'm like, am I really going to use it? But I actually do. I actually do. Let's see. And believe it or not, you can use the Mildred Payne for other types of readings. In fact, I do. Sometimes clients specifically request that I work with that deck to the point I have its own little listing. Like if people wanted to do a reading with me, they could get the Mildred Pain. I still use other like oracles and maybe a little bit of tarot in their readings, but the main focus is the Mildred Pain. And they could be asking about their life purpose, about a life or love situation. So it's not, it's not just do mingling. I assure you. That's that was not my intention when I first got it. This card is scary. <laughs> All right, let me do this. Let me take my banner off. And this one is going to be a triggering topic. Let me do that. I know. I keep thinking about it. I even made a special box. Did you? Oh, I bet it's a lovely box. It just gives that feel of like something old. Even the story behind the Mildred Payne, like Mildred Payne. I love what Patrick Valenza did with that. Like the whole story, the backdrop behind her. Like, listen to this. It says, during her years as an inmate in Finwood Asylum, Mildred Payne locked her smoldering anger deep inside her heart. On the dreadful night of October 31st, 1933, she finally unleashed her rage, leaving the asylum and the notorious Finwood coven in fury ruins. And a lot of people thought this was based on a real person. And like he even has a picture of her, her older self. <laughs> Like a whole like story, whole like generational story behind Mildred Payne. It's really cool. Really, really cool. All right. So let me get us ready for our next case. Next case, Kim. I can remember that. For timestamps purposes. Okay. Melissa Mooney. Now, Melissa Mooney, if y'all don't know, I did recently do a reading, a joint kind of like reading series for her and Nicole Coates. They were two models out of Los Angeles, California that uh, were found deceased in their uh, high end apartment, downtown apartments in Los Angeles. And Melissa's death was ruled a homicide, whereas Nicole's is still being considered suspicious, even though when her family, her father and aunt discovered Nicole, to, it, to them, it felt like it looked clear that someone did that to her, but police are still labeling it as suspicious. And they still have not linked these two cases together. They, the police seem to feel, I don't want to say strongly, but they seem to think that these cases are not related, although a lot of people do believe they are. And I can understand why. Very, like tons of similarities to models. They were like the near same age. They only lived a, a short distance downtown from each other in 
high rise or high end luxury apartments. And then both of them, I think, were going on dates. I know for sure Nicole Coates was going on a date. And one of you all so kindly let me know it was like Friday night. She was going on a date. That's the last that folks knew her fr friends and family knew of where her last whereabouts would be. And then she's discovering her apartment to cease several days later. Melissa, I think is a similar situation. There, Melissa is also into real estate. She's a real estate uh, or a realtor, as well as a model. And Nicole Coates uh, worked in sales and was also modeling. However, what I do want to direct you to was the fetus card from the this this deck right here if you look the the red whenever the fetus card comes up i have to be respectful especially if women are involved i guess men too of course but you know i don't want to just jump to the immediate conclusion that um a baby might be involved because there may not be. A lot of times that car can represent new beginnings, starting a new, um, birthing something like a creative endeavor. Um, it can it can mean those types of things. Sitting next to the frog though was interesting to me. That fetus next to the frog card, and I I'm still working through that. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment because what I'm going to do is read a little excerpt about an update that was just recently shared in the news about Melissa. If you haven't already heard, if you haven't already heard, let's see. Thank you, Jackie. You are so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Cause let me tell you, it could sometimes take me all day to timestamp. That's because I might be distracted and doing other things. But yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to make a little note here, timestamps. So now I'm going to share with you the update about her. Okay. And I'm reading from E! News. Uh, e news, you know, like entertainment news. Um, pregnant model Melissa Mooney's cause of death revealed. So she was pregnant. I think they said she was two months pregnant. And maybe I won't read to save time, but basically just give you um, just the, the information here from this latest article dated October 5th. Um, she was the medical examiner says that she died from homicidal violence. They didn't go into much further details um, and said there was other significant conditions under her cause of death. Um, and she was two months pregnant. That wasn't released at the time that we did the reading. And so every now and then a car will come up like there's one deck or one card out of the trace evidence oracle that I have that has like a little picture of a sonogram. And sometimes when that comes up, it could be that a, you know, an ultrasound was recently done or baby's expecting, but I really do try to get a, paint a broad stroke of the other possibilities that the car could mean. And let's see. So I'm going to read this here. It said, officers were called to perform a welfare check on Melissa at, res at her residence in the downtown area. Her cousin, Bailey, previously said the family members contacted the police expressing their concerns for Melissa's well-being after noticing she dropped all communication. There was something in here I wanted to share. Also, they do have GoFund a GoFundMe set up for her. Um, probably to help with funeral expenses and maybe even a PI, um, I would imagine. They said, and I thought it was here, but maybe it's not, but some of her items were taken, like her laptop. Maybe it's not this article. It was like personal effects were taken. And that's going to be important in a moment when I show and tell the next cards for her. 
two months pregnant. So that just amplifies her loved one's grief. And her sister, who is a, I guess, a, a Guyanese musician and star, um, she says that Melissa was super excited and she knew she really wanted a kid, right? And it's something that she's always talked about. And she says she added that her sister's boyfriend is heartbroken. So that's a clue. I was wondering where is, where is this? Babies. Now that we know this information, where's the baby's father? Where's the significant other? What's going on here? So, I'm trying to see if they talk about it here. Okay, here we go. It was later discovered that her laptop phone, her dirty laundry, and favorite purse were missing. Okay, remember that. Laptop, phone, her dirty laundry, and favorite purse were missing. And then we ponder, like, what that could mean, right? Hmm. Because somebody's taking your dirty laundry and your favorite purse, your laptop is also, I mean, maybe they want to sell it. And I think some, I think someone did buy her phone, tried to buy it for a hundred bucks, I believe. So it made it off to the streets to be sold. So they could be financially motivated, but then again, sometimes when laptops are taken or computer devices, um, it's because they want to hide their digital tracks. And her personal laundry is weird to me. Comet, Saturn, male influence. We got the boy. Emotional connection with the chalice. Chalice is like the cups in Tarot. Dark, condescending, disagreeable, rejection. She's newly pregnant. Trauma, emotional blackmail, anger and chains. Maybe she was in a prior relationship that soured and she's newly pregnant, maybe moving on with her life. And I don't know. I'm just throwing some stuff out there. What do you all think? I did want to share one of the cards here says the perp may have, it's hard for me to read it, an item belonging to the victim. Well, her dirty laundry, her favorite purse. Who bought that purse? Who bought the purse? I don't know. Maybe she bought it. Maybe her family members bought it. Maybe she took a lot of pictures with the purse, her favorite purse with said person. I feel like she may have known the person. I could be wrong. And maybe that's why police are saying it's two different perps or two different circumstances between the two models cases there that came up in the readings that I did for the three, I did three videos on this, this particular cases, Melissa's and Nicole's. And I, I feel like police just haven't really shared all they know about the crime scenes themselves. Um, House can escape. That deep water could mean evidence thrown into water, or it could be an, a deeply emotionally murky situation. Um, karmic connection. And look, we got the computer card. Computer. This person. Devil in disguise. Trickster. Manipulator. Hiding in the shadows, maybe a threat of gun violence towards her. Maybe that's not what caused her death. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't, they didn't say that, but they just said um, homicidal violence. Uh, but it could be past threats. And she just wanted her peace. That's what the peaceful amongst thorns mean in this particular reading. She just wanted peace. Social media may offer clues. 
there could be some um, in, like some surveillance video capturing the person, maybe not right near her place, but maybe somewhere in the vicinity of that apartment building. Money may be involved. Cell phone records. Cell phone records may provide valuable clues. Friday, we got Sunday and Friday of significance, and we got cover up bank records. Um, she was into real estate. Maybe, I don't know. It seems very personal what it sounds like. This is the graphic detail that her sister had released. She said that it looked like Melissa's ankles were broken. I mean, this is crazy. And local, someone known to her local, very local. Maybe they live locally, very close to her. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Whew. So Jackie, who has the, well, I'll pull it out in a minute. The Secrets Revealed True Crime Oracle that I made is a 160 card deck that I use a lot now. Because, I, you know, when you make it, it's coming out of your imagination, your the image, images that trigger you. So I use it a lot more than many of the decks that I have, my true crime deck. She pulled manipulation, life insurance, con man fraud, dumpster abuse, neglect, and timeline. And what I love about getting together with all of you, whether we do it in this live session or in the comments under the videos, is you all are readers. Many of the folks who are watching this either have intuitive gifts. Well, I think we all have intuitive gifts, but heightened intuitive gifts or you're, you know, studying the cards or you are well versed in the cards and we get together and we just talk about what's coming up in the readings. That's what I really appreciate about what we do over at Mystery Mystic Monday. So you got some interesting cards. And see, to me, your cards also speak to, it's like talking to mine, that this is personal, money related with this life insurance card, but life insurance can sometimes be like, who would you have a life insurance policy with? Who would you have a life insurance policy with, right? You got con man and fraud, and I got the trickster card from the Divine Crime Oracle. Not made by me. That's a different deck. Also a really awesome true crime deck, by the way. Abuse, neglect. So that tells me she wanted her peace from whatever situation this was. Could this be a bullying kind of friendship situation, maybe? Allegedly? Dumpster could have thrown some stuff away, evidence, right? Maybe near, you know, those apartment buildings. I've been downtown Los Angeles before. They have like whole like like areas in the back of them with dumpsters all in line because you, you got to have all that refuse from all of those people who live in those big apartments. And so there'll be like a whole line of dumpsters in the back of the building. I'm, I'm thinking that cops would have looked at the surveillance there or would have looked through the trash. The problem is if you don't get to those dumpsters right away, and I think it took them a few days to find her, they're already going off to the dumps. And these dumps are several miles away. And it, it's like, a, it's literally worse than a needle in a haystack trying to find evidence that may have gone there. So there's that. So yeah, this is the deck that I've made. I have to separate it into two because it's so large. Jackie, how have you been getting along with shuffling them? Do you do what I do, separate them out and shuffle in small sections? What eventually I hope to do is to make them in their own like little mini little decks and people can, it's like choose your own adventure, but choose your own true crime decks. That's the vision. <laughs> I reckon the baby daddy wasn't happy with the news. Yeah. yeah. 
I would like more details. I know police have to, you know, hold their cards close to the vest. But another reason why awareness is important and why it's important to keep talking about these cases, and dare I say, they even call the police station to inquire about the cases, is because that keeps the officers motivated to keep working on the case. A lot of times they can quickly go cold. And if nobody's really interested in the, you know, like the public's lost interest, th there's no motivation from law enforcement to keep investigating in a timely fashion. You know what I mean? Squeaky will gets the oil. There have been a couple of cases where I've called from my Skype phone to a police station to ask what the status of a case is. Like, what's going, is this still open? Is this still active? And they'll tell you, they'll give you, I mean, they're not going to give you all the details, but you know, it is a public entity law enforcement and they do have their public um, relations people that will provide information. So keeping up the engagement and the noise surrounding the cases is what helps also to keep it alive. Water witness alive and aiding and abetting. So somebody probably had help. I think the impression I got to is I think her sister kind of feels that way as well. Oh, I'm happy you're upset with it. I love working with it. And I watch, sometimes I don't even use it for true crime purposes. I use it for other things like predicting outcomes in television shows I'm watching. Like Law and Order won't be around because of the writer's strike. So I have to wait till next year. But sometimes I'll be watching like Law and Order SVU and like, have the cards tell the tale before I watch the show and then see how it unfolds. I'm a little geek like that. Yeah, I think our belong I think our belongings or um, some critical information because if there's got to be some sort of evidence that that came onto the perp that maybe you know a piece of clothing, blood transfer, something like that threw it away. Could be her items, could be the laptop that's thrown away. I'm sorry they just wouldn't destroy it, but it could be her purse. She did have two seemingly um, good jobs and her sister is like a mega star in like Guyana. Um, so I don't know if she was really hurting for money and this apartment complex, although the security seems a little sketch, sometimes those fancy apartments in California, they look like they're all secure, but it'd be a little sketch sometimes in the security. <laughs> I'm just saying, I've seen with my own eyes, like people slip through and get in and it's supposed to be secure and you're like, okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. You are, you're a badass. I have to like shuffle them in, in bits, like a section like this. Clara, I don't know what that means. What is that? Be reading naked. Oh, uh, if you don't mind elaborating, that would be great. That would be great, my friend. Um, and we also got footprints. Sure. I got footprints. And you can use Tarot, right? You can use your other Oracle decks. You don't have to use the decks that I use. What makes it also so interesting when we do these types of readings and you all participate with your decks, the layers and how our re readings talk to one another from different decks. I'm always fascinated by that. So there was the footprints card as well. So next up, I'm going to stop here for a moment. Let me stop sharing because now we are 54 minutes in. Right. For Kevin, this is a maritime mysteries case. I like maritime mysteries. I want to get back to those. Um, I will be taking like a little mini break so I can actually record some cold case readings and maybe some more maritime mysteries. 
Um, but if there's some other case that pops up that we we must do a reading on, you all let me know in the comments or send me an email um, and let me know if something comes up on your radar that I should look at. Sometimes people DM me. That's fine. Sometimes I see it right away and sometimes I don't. That's, yeah, kind of all over the place with that. So have you all heard of the Kevin McGrath case where he went missing from the... I think it's called the Conquest, the Carnival Cruise Lines, like a like a weekender um, going from Miami, like the Port of Miami to the Bahamas and back again. Very, very short cruise. Um, he was on board with like 40 family members, I suppose, celebrating his father's 60th birthday. He has a twin brother. They're fraternal. And he has two small children, but he is recently divorced from or separated or divorced from his wife. And he just went missing. They were getting ready to disembark on the last day of the cruise. And Kevin's nowhere to be found. His luggage is still in the, the you know, the cabin. And, you know, they're saying that the overboard track, like the going man overboard tracking system, which I heard word on the curb is that that carnival ship really doesn't have like the little, the little, what you call it, tracking system. They have surveillance cameras and maybe other means, but not exactly the man overboard MOB system. But that's what I've heard. We Nobody's given a real concrete answer on that and whether or not it's actually on there. So if you fall overboard, it's supposed to alert them that a person fell overboard. Um, some people think that he ran off um, to start a new life because as it turns out, as time went on and he's been missing for several days now, since Labor Day weekend, he's been missing. Was that September 5th-ish? Um, all these stories are coming out now that he was dishonorably discharged from the military. Um, that actually he's on felony probation from an attack again, or a threat of attack or something like that against his wife and kids. He moved from Tennessee to Florida to live with his parents. Um, so he had a, his probation transfer from Tennessee to Florida. And yeah, it, all this is coming out. So some people are thinking that he ran away and oh, and he owes like $5,000 in child support. But my guess is that it wasn't his wife that initiated that. It could have been the state of Tennessee who like if she's getting some sort of governmental assistance, they automatically will file a court action against um the father for unpaid child support. So you can, so he can immediately go into arrears um, as soon as they file that action, the state. So it's really sad. You know, it's really, really a sad case. This man served in the military, I think for six years. And I just want y'all to think about this for a minute. He served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria all like I would dare to say war-torn areas and back-to-back -back deployment. I used to work for an insurance company that catered to the military and I worked for that company like before 9-11 and thereafter 9-11. So I was in constant contact with soldiers or pe people in the military and a, sh a shift that happened after 9-11, September 11th, um, was that they were getting put back-to-back -back deployments. And that's not healthy, it's not healthy. And there's, there's rumors that he may have been struggling uh, with some, you know, maybe PTSD or just some, you know, some things that were mentally weighing on him. The readings that I did, what I took from it is I think that he um, went overboard. Could have been an accident. He was drinking quite a bit the night before. But he also allegedly could have taken his own life. And I think his family is really just wanting 
to have more concrete answers. The problem is, is that you've got a ship cruise line that needs to protect, you know, their bottom line. They're not going to release everything at once. To me, probably what's going to have to happen is his family is going to have to file a suit in order to go through discovery and see what the ship is willing to release. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Not so much to sue because of him going overboard, but it's just, I don't know. I don't know if because the family keeps saying they're not getting a lot of information. The other thing is if you're going into the ocean, the chances of being found pretty slim. So let me share with you all here. I'm curious here if you've heard about this case. I'm going to share with you some different cards in a moment. Let's see what you all are saying. Thank you. I appreciate you. Because Lord knows I need that help. <laughs> Thank you. I like testing out decks and celebrity situations. Those are great. What I would like to start doing is start either having folks on with me on lives, um, or we could do videos if lives if can't work for you all. But those are open to it. Wouldn't it be fun just to get together and talk about some celebrity stuff and throw a couple of cards and see what comes up? play around with our different decks. Some of us collect decks to actually use them. I being one of them. I do have some decks that I don't ever use because I'm like, oh, wow, they're so expensive. Most of the time, I want to use my decks. So it'd be fun. I'd like to test. I have been playing around with celebrity reading a few here and there. I just have to be called to actually do it. And sometimes I don't even know what's going on. I'm like the last person who should probably have like a celebrity pop culture channel because kind of sometimes the last to know what's going on. The mini steampunk and witches tarot are in the top spot for me. Ooh. Now the mini steampunk might appeal to me. I ended up selling my full size one, but I saw the mini one. I was like, sometimes it's the size of the deck that will get me to use it. Maybe just maybe that might be something I'm going on my wish list. It is a good Irish name. And somebody I was in, I forgot where I was at, maybe Web Sleuths. It may not be Web Sleuths. I don't know. It was somewhere. And it, somebody, no, no, no. It was on the New York Post uh, article and um, in the comments section. And somebody was like, yeah, that's a good, Kevin McGrath is a great, like a good, solid Irish name. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is. I thought, I have to say, I thought that as well. Just saying. Just saying. Oh, thank you for watching them. Thank you for taking the time to watch them. I appreciate you for that. We will get to doing some lighter content, I assure you all. It was not, I try to keep this contained on Mondays. Maritime uh, Mysteries can go up at any time of the week. Because it's not always, it's, sometimes it's about ships going under or stuff like that, right? But I try to keep it contained to one, one day a week, every other week or something like that. So I don't burn you out. Maybe he has PTSD trauma, could have even been experimented on. So many things in military we have no clue about. You're right. You're right. And I mean, Lord knows what he could have been exposed to. I remember talking to uh, military folk the people that I, when I worked for this insurance company and they would just tell me little, tell me bits and pieces about their conditions, about being exposed to certain harsh chemicals or, you know, all sorts of things that are really toxic to the body and the mind. And I would imagine the spirit seeing things and, and being forced to do things to people in those countries. You know, my heart goes out to him. Yes. It's not great that he was threatening, accused, and I guess convicted of threatening his wife and children. But his wife, from all accounts that I can see in the news reports, she was like, we still love him. It, it, to me, that tells me that they have an understanding that there was something going on there. But that didn't come out right away. That information, them web sleuths, let me tell you, and them Facebook group folk, ooh, 
they are some kind of detectives. They be on the prowl and on the mission of finding out information. They run in background checks. I mean, find out all sorts of stuff. So how those stories broke surrounding Kevin's case was because people were um, doing all this investigative work, you know, like armchair detectives. And then the TMZ and New York Post started picking up on that and taking the stories and running based on information from armchair detectives. Can you do a 60 minute offline? I can, if you'd like to work with me, you can book a session. If that's what you're asking, I do do readings, Zoom, video readings, audio recorded readings. Shiv should have surveillance on all parts surrounding the ship. I agree. It just, so in doing maritime mystery cases, what struck me was how, um, how much lack of surveillance cameras they have. And sometimes the surveillance cameras are shut off and some of them are like in spots that you can't be on the ship. And then it was also very frustrating that I found out is that those ships, those cruise ships, they have the technology to install these man overboard uh, sig signals or whatever. They have that, but it hasn't been enforced to put on all the ships yet. So only a handful of the ships have them, which is very frustrating. All of the ships should have them. But in my mind, I, I'm always curious, like if a man goes overboard and let's say they're an average swimmer at best, even if the ship turns around, is it really feasible for people to be found? I don't know. I mean, I've heard people being found, so I know it is, but it just, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever do a cruise. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if cruising is for me. I also like to be like land on feet or feet on land. <laughs> yes, indeed. Have every version of the darkness of light. Except for the first version, I have been searching for the guidebook. As I've been listening, listening, I made my own book from the PDF. I did too. I have the first edition. I don't have any of the other editions. But what I ended up doing was I made the PDF into a wonderful spiral guidebook. And now you're inspiring me to work with that deck today. Thank you. <laughs> That would be a great one to work with. I'll just stick my guidebook over here. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I have my Mildred Paints also in a spiral notebook, but I need to take it back in, have the pages reprinted, and make it a spiral, like re-spiral it again. Because <laughs> I use that one a lot. Ooh, oh, that's going to be good. Is that going to be on your YouTube channel? And be sure if you all are YouTubers, and I know some of you are, including you, Jackie, please drop a, a link of your channel. I would love to catch that. I'm also curious about the Titanic. I did the reading on the, the um, submersible a few months back or whenever that happened. Oh, my God. That's another thing. I'm like, y'all pay how much to go in that little contraption? I'm not even really claustrophobic. I just have this thing where I don't like to be in big bodies of water and I cannot just readily get to land. That's just me. I don't know. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yes, it is such a stunning deck. It is a powerhouse. I remember seeing it and I was like, I have to have that. I just have to have it. So I got it. And then I wanted some of the other editions, but I was going through like a death year when those other editions, like I forgot which one that I really wanted. I forgot, but I really, really wanted it. I had to refrain because I was in a death year. 
Okay, Indigo Jaguar Intuitive Arts Channel. I'm going to screen grab that. So I remember. Will it let me? Yes, it will. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got a call from the post office Friday that the Terra Volatile will be delivered today to me. Been waiting forever for it to open up. Don't you just love that? When you get that good news about a, your long awaited deck. And that one is a, a gorgeous one. Oh my God. I've been gluing on the pages into a smaller book. You go. Is it fun to sometimes to really get tangible with your, you know, your like get into the creative mode with your tools? And if the creator didn't create a guidebook, that's okay. We can make something even better that serves us even better. This lays flat. I could have it laying flat as I'm working with those cards. I made a master um, guidebook for all the PDFs of like the decks that don't have guidebooks. I printed them out and put them all together. That's the one where the Mildred Payne PDFs are, and that's why it's so well used, whereas this one, not so much. But make it work for you. You know what I'm saying? Make it work. Hi, Scott. Thank you for joining me. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy you are here. I've been practicing going live again. We'll have to go live together at some point soon. Good afternoon. Glad you're here. Yes. I know my friends are here. Y'all hanging out with me. Thank you. It was so cool that you were celebrating Jackie's birthday. We got to show her a little love yesterday. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> It's been a journey, you know, my journey. <laughs> it would be fun though. We can finally get together like we wanted to, right? So yes, okay. So I am gonna save that little snippet so I can come back to it later and search out that channel that Jackie has recommended. Keep doing that, okay. Now. So Kevin has been going through some things and I don't know what's really sad about all of this. is like people are like going in on him online, like talking mess about his criminal history. Again, I know like what he's been charged with and convicted of is terrible, but you've, you're only looking at one small piece of it and yeah. I mean, we have some cards here that kind of told me, like the dove over the fish card. Um, the wheel making the transition. Um, I kind of got a sense that he may have been like the black sheep of the family. That's just me. That's nothing here nor near, you know, like nothing concrete. That's just what I'm picking up on here. We have in envy and disconnected. I get a sense that he may have been a rebellious spirit. His brother, his twin brother, um, looks like he has a stable career life. Um, I don't know. Buttoned up. Just two different vibes. So I don't know, friends. It's not looking good. So I did this reading here. We have the mental health card. The story went crazy in the um, media. And then you, okay, so the jail and imprisonment card came up. I didn't know what to make of it. And now in retrospect, hearing the news about his criminal past, I suppose to speaking to that, so is that eight of swords. The eight of swords and the five of swords to me told me about him feeling in a mental jail and feeling very defeated about life. Then we got the water card. Then we got the debt. So that child support debt. Um, maybe they won't. Maybe his family could just hire a PI. Have you all ever watched a show, um, Cruise Ship Killers? It's on, I think you can find it on YouTube, like old replays. 
but um, oftentimes it's really difficult for families to find out what happened to our loved ones when something goes amiss or awry on a cruise ship. So sometimes they'll hire PIs, but even the PIs hit roadblocks. And because it's on open waters, you know, you, it's like which jurisdiction takes hold of that case. And so it it is complicated. So when you're in them open waters, it's like open sesame. And that's another reason why I probably won't be cruising anytime soon. We got alone, friends and associates, lawyer. I'm back. Somehow the power went out. <laughs> now I'm back. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Am I muted? I'm sure. <laughs> Jackie, I'm back. Can you see me? Is the power like, I'm assuming the power went out because the, the ring light went out. I'm back. Let me see. Can you see and hear me? Yay. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm back. <laughs> Every now and then, the tropics will do something weird and squirrely. I won't even blame it on that. I used to drop out when I was doing lives back in when I was in California. So I don't recall that. But yeah, Kevin, 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 I don't know, friends. I was going to share some more with you on that. Um, debt, we talked about that. Children and life insurance came up in the Ten of Pentacles. I was like, that's an interest, that's interesting to me. And then that also signaled to me, like, and this is what makes it kind of tragic and sad that I want to try and say this tactfully, that he felt like he was better off gone. I don't know. It just, that's what struck me when I did the reading. And isolated and alone told me that this is not due to someone who took his life. But there's also rumors that maybe something, he got into a fight um, on board and someone did something to him. The alone and isolated cards is what told me that this was his doing. And then we got buried. Buried at sea, water card. And I sense that the, the surveillance captured him, maybe not right, like right as he went aboard, but maybe certain parts of the ship that that's not being released to the public. Um, there could have even been witnesses that have given statements that have not been released to the public. Okay. And Depressive vibe, intense, living in a fantasy. 
And then we got the S card, taking one's own life, right? He could have got into a really bad argument with his family that weekend or before, or maybe this physical altercation card is speaking about the altercation that really has put him on this trajectory, which was with his family, you know, his, his wife and kids. And somebody feeling unloved and unwanted. King of Pentacles in reverse. And what do you think about? Give me some things that you think about the of the King of Pentacles in reverse. What comes up for you when you see that card in a reading such as this? Quiz time. You said witness and I labor. You see that serendipity. You see the the connections. It's, I get goosebumps every time I interact with you all with these types of like readings, goosebumps. I'm like, I'm always like, what, what did somebody say? To that end, I'm a little behind on my comments, not a little, a lot behind on my, my comments. So you may be getting some very late responses from me. Don't mind me. It's A, I'm kind of anal about responding to comments. And it, you could have left me a comment a year ago. You might be getting a comment. You might be getting a response because I want to go back and see what you said. Magical, Jackie. And this is 160 cards. So for her to get the witness card, I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. Hit and run, concealed or hidden witness. I'm thinking a fight thrown overboard. And, and I won't rule that out. I mean... There are some cards in my spread, like the physical altercation that could allude to that. Maybe he got so drunk and he popped off at the mouth and it led to something, whether it's with allegedly within the birthday party group or someone that he didn't really know on the ship or, you know, I don't know about employees. Maybe. I don't know. Could be that. Could be that. That's right, quiz time. So, well, let me see what y'all say. Adam Bluefire says, King of Pentacles upside down, a feeling of lack, abandoned, no one to turn to. Exactly, exactly. I would add too, like, you know, when you think of the King of Pentacles, he's a fatherly figure. He's um, someone you can lean on financially or just not even financially, just that security. And in reverse, he is not those things anymore. Um, or maybe he feels that sense of insecurity that he's not those things. You know, I'm not, I don't have money. I mean, I imagine he had to move, you know, maybe out of the family home out of the state they were living in to go live with his parents. Uh, maybe he was having a hard time finding work. Uh, there was no mention of a job. And he's now, he's on felony probation. Maybe he was, dis allegedly he was dishonorably discharged. Um, he could, you know, be dealing with a lot of stress. He now owes child support. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah, he's not right in the physical and material world. It's heartbreaking. That's how I felt when I did the reading. I'm like, this made me sad. This was like really sad for me. And it struck so many chords because I worked for that insurance company that served the military peeps and en newly enlisted all the way up to like, you know, admirals and colonels. I did, I worked for that company for about seven, almost eight years. And you start to work with these peeps and your heart goes out to them. It just, it's, it's really sad how the military people are treated. I have to say. Bye. Thank you for joining Jackie, our birthday gal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you popped in. So happy you're here. So happy. Yeah, this is a this is a doozy of a topic, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me, peeps. Um, let's see. What is that noise? Hold on one second. Oh my god.
My husband's using a very, very loud drill. Okay, so I might be muting <laughs> from time to time. Okay, so Miriam Silla, I did readings on her case. And what I will say about this reading is, is very disturbing, very much trigger warning. Um, she was found and she was found dismembered. And it's heartbreaking. And um, it's, the details about why are still not revealed. But she was found. So that is an update. But it's a very, very tragic update that was just disturbing. One of the cards that stands out to me when I did the reading and before she was found was, you are not prepared. And that's from this little deck here. You can get it on Etsy like 10 bucks well plus shipping but yeah you are not prepared we were not i was not prepared you start to get attached to these people in a way you know so it was like oh my god and then we did find out or she was released it turned out that the, she was found you know what's trippy about her case is that soon after she went missing her body was found, but they didn't connect the dots until like a month later, a month or some change later, that she was this person that they found. I thought that was a trip. In the distant future, hopefully we will be finding out um, more about motive or more about how they came, how her and the perp came to, to be on that fateful day. Mia, we have a real big update. Oops, hold on. I forgot to do my timestamp. 25, Miriam. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so I, there was a setting. Hold on, let me stop sharing. So there's a setting, a little button that it's new. It said new, and it says it blocks out background noises. So I'll let my husband know. I'm glad you said. It. Thank you for saying that, Miss Moonlight, because I just selected that little thing today on one. Of, you know, when you're setting up your Streamyard situation, and it was like it said new, and it says you can isolate or you can block out background noise. So that's interesting because it was loud. He's like, <laughs> it was. I was like, oh my god, oh my god. Thank you. I was wondering about that. So sad, brutal, and odd case of this lady and how she is connected to the killer, if she even was, right? It turned out, I was watching a profiler, like, and she's on, she's on YouTube. I forgot her name, but she's a profiler, retired, I guess. And she was talking about how they were getting all the facts wrong and the information and that the perp and the uh, victim actually lived very, 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 very close to one another, very close. But you wouldn't know that based on what was released in the news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 120. I'm going to make sure I put that for Marion's case, case number four. Ooh, we're making it through, friends. We're making it through. Just got a new deck arrived from Amazon. Okay, you are getting me in trouble. Every time you mention decks, I end up putting them on my wish list and they somehow end up on their way to me. <laughs> uh, Twilight Realm, a para a fairy. Ooh, a dark fae deck. I'm using to do some parallel readings with you. <gasps> Twilight Realm. I never heard of Twilight Realm. Oh, You, have some, you pick out some of the most amazing decks. Oh, it's gorgeous. Okay, we'll be checking that out. <laughs> Let me just remember that. Sorry, I would share, but let me just screen grab. Adam, is a, he has a wonderful collection, I have to say. All right, friend. Thank you, Miss Moonlight, for chatting with me and chatting with the chat. I appreciate you joining. Thank you. 
Okay. I'm going to keep going because we don't, I don't know how many more cases we have, but I want to do this because if I am gone for a couple of weeks, we at least have some updates and there's probably many more cases we've covered on the channel on mystery mystic Mondays or mystery mystic musings um, that have updates. So if there's ones that you want me to cover in future lives or future videos or to do another reading on, let me know if you want me to do reading. So it would help me if you would specify what area you would like me to explore in that case, especially if it's an updates reading um, or what question you would like me to, to focus in on. Because I could do maybe a quick video with just that question. Whereas, you know, sometimes when I'm doing these opening long readings, they take a lot of energy and time out of me. So it would help if you do have a recommendation, just just take one more extra little bit of effort. I know I'm asking a lot, but just say what, what aspect of the case you'd like me to explore further. Mia, beautiful angel. This was sad. Another trigger warning. Very sad. Um, but there is an update. So... What I will share is this. She, back in, was it June? This gorgeous soul went out with some friends and late in the night, you know, maybe on their way home from a party, surveillance cameras capture her fall. Like it looked like she fell out of a car, maybe was pushed out of a car. No one really know, you know, no, knew at the time. But she fell out, her head struck the concrete, and the vehicle kept going. And I think it was some days later, like maybe four or five days later. I can't remember the exact number of days, but then, you know, she was declared, you know, I believe it was brain dead, or she, they pulled the plug and she later passed away. And it was like questions on how did she fall out of the vehicle? Did she fall out? Was she pushed out? Who would just leave her? Who would leave her on the side of the road like that? Um, was there something more to the story? So I did an Oracle reading and we now have an update, which is that there has been an arrest made of the, it's the driver of the vehicle of the 2022 Jeep. I can't remember what make and model. I'll read the article in a moment. Um, but some cards that stand out here is the rat card, the foot, Saturn, um, perhaps coin. Someone didn't want to have to pay for what happened. Addictions, also selfishness, hostility. So I'll tell you why that's the case in a moment. So I'm just going to read here. Let me share the screen. You see what I'm doing. Arrest made in Mia Kainu case out of Southfield, Michigan. And her mom's just saying she was Mia's beautiful inside and out, no doubt about it. Um, she wanted to be a veterinarian, just a beautiful soul. Um, but the details I want to share with you about this. She died June 5th, just two days after police found her in the middle of Providence Drive in front of the Coach House Apartments at 4.29 a.m. Um, okay, here's the details. So the police had a press conference and provided details. This, this young lady right here, Fern, she's the one that's been arrested uh, for, you know, her involvement here. So he knew had attended a house party with friends while home from college for the summer. She left the party with her friend, 23 year old Kentinia Fern, the owner and driver of a 2022 silver Jeep compass that Kenu fell from. Uh, Mia was the backseat passenger of Fern's vehicle. Police showed the surveillance footage from the night of the accident that revealed that Fern continued to drive after Kenu fell from the vehicle. 
Barron showed the vehicle and expressed his anger and disappointment surrounding the circumstances of Nia's death, asking what kind of friend doesn't stop driving to turn the vehicle around to tend to a friend? What kind of friend is that? That's the officer. Um, Barron said there's no evidence to suggest that Kanu jumped from the vehicle. Her autopsy and toxicology report revealed that the alcohol was found in her blood and was at 0 0.21 or so 0 0.21. So two times the legal limit, I would say. Um, Barron added that evidence suggests that Kanu may have been in the process of vomiting as vomit was found in the seal of the door and in the roadway. Police also found the key, the fob to the Jeep and Kanu's phone, the victim's phone. Barron stated that two separate search warrants were obtained, one to search the vehicle and one for the Uconnect system. The vehicle was dusted for prints, revealing that only, only Kanu's fingerprints were in the back seat. No blood evidence was found inside the vehicle. Okay. Now, this is Fern's account of things. And before I go there, let me stop sharing for a moment. Before I go there, I used to be a claims adjuster. So that, people don't know this, but that actually happens quite a bit um, where people will open the door of the car. It could be moving and they've got a vomit and they may, you know, lean over to release and they tumble out of the vehicle, especially if they don't have their seatbelt on. So that thought crossed my mind when I was doing the reading, but I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But I just have to share that. Now we're going to get Fern's account of things. And let me just make sure. I think I probably started this case 30, but I'll double check that. That's Nia's case number five. Y'all get to have me all afternoon. <laughs> okay. Now, Fern reported to police that following Kenu's fall, she picked up a friend from a nearby apartment complex, and together the two searched for Mia. Fern told police she noticed ambulance and police lights in the area of the incident, but did not approach. Later that day, so like at noon, 1225 p.m., Police said Fern went to the Southfield Police Department with a friend and said a physical altercation had occurred between her and her boyfriend. So Fern's boyfriend and her got into it. Um, and Mia was asleep in the back seat of the vehicle. So that makes sense. She's probably not wearing her seatbelt. She's laid there, you know, and probably opened the door, right? She stated that the boyfriend took her phone and drove off in his vehicle. She then tried following his vehicle to retrieve her phone, this is Fern, but was unsuccessful in doing so. Fern allegedly told Kenu, told, or excuse me, Fern allegedly took Mia's phone to contact another friend and reported that Mia woke up and grabbed her phone back and later fell from the vehicle. The impact from the fall from the vehicle is the result of how Mia sustained her injury, Barron said. After the fall, police said Fern visited the Detroit Police 5th Precinct to report her phone stolen. Hours before she reported to Southfield Police what had happened to Mia. Detroit Police noted that Fern was intoxicated when she made the report. Okay. Uh, Barron said that evidence showed that Fern was more concerned about getting her phone back from her boyfriend than calling 911 and tending to Mia. Fern was arrested September 19th, and the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office announced September 20th that Fern was charged with leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death and operating while intoxicated. The first charge is a felony punishable by up to five years imprisonment and or a fine of up to $5,000. The second is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days imprisonment and or up to a $500 fine. What do y'all think about that? Let me know in the chat or in the comments section if you're watching this later. Believe it or not, you don't get a, if it's truly deemed an accident, even if you're inebriated, you may not get a lot of time, but it's, it's upsetting nevertheless. 
Um, let's see if there's anything else to share her here right here. Okay. Okay. Let me stop sharing. Sorry, folks. There might be loud noise, I'm told. So let me do this. I'm sharing my screen. It's really sad. Oh my gosh. Oh, killing me. Okay, so going back to the readings, right? The reason why we like to go back is not to be like, oh, yeah, I got this right or I got that right. Sometimes the unfoldment of what has come up is not all like completely um, like followed through in the readings, right? Sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes it's like spot on. And sometimes you all pick up on things. It's important to go back if you want to learn and grow and to row. It's important to go back to look at your readings and see what came up and see where you were right on the money and where you know you weren't and learn from that. That's why we do these things, okay? So rat definitely felt that the Saturn card, Fern and her boyfriend getting into it. That was something that stands out to me as it relates to Mia's case, the coin card, you know, these cell phones are now running almost $1,500. They're very expensive. And so this lady was more focused on her phone, getting her phone back than actually attending to her friend and more concerned about catching that DUI than she was about her friend. That's horrific. It's horrific. Selfishness, with regret, at least she has some regret. Addictions at, at play here. June was when this incident occurred. Four to five months. Did it take four to five months for us to finally get some answers? June, July, August. Yeah. Yeah. Four to five months. Tuesday, was that when I think she crossed? Or was it Monday night going into Tuesday when she transitioned? Maybe um, the lady during winter time, Fern, will have to serve out her sentence or maybe it goes to trial. I don't know what's going to happen, but maybe that's what these December, February winter cards are speaking to. We got manipulation for sure. The legal system. The landfill dumpster trash cart really speaks to how she treated her friend. I can't imagine, I cannot imagine just leaving my friend on the side of the road like that. And it may not have made a difference, you know, in terms of Mia surviving that, get to her head, but it could have. And how dare you? Distra a distraction or diversion? That was interesting. Maybe the, the whole little cell phone altercation. And she kind of glossed over the fact that, um, they got that Mia snatched her cell phone back from the driver from Fern. She kind of glossed over that because that could have been like, why you have my phone? Give me my phone. You know, it could have been a little bit more than what she's revealing. Um, truth revealed, cover up, propaganda, propaganda, propaganda and hit and run. And that card told me that's where I was thinking like this was feeling more accident, like maybe she did tumble out. Certainly it could be maybe she was hit and ran. Accident, you know, but not accident. That it's an accident, what happened to her, but fleeing the scene, then that's what adds the criminal element to it. Okay, we're gonna stop there. Uh, hi, Indigo Jaguar Intuitive Art. I hear you all are going to be doing a live on, I'm assuming it's a live, maybe a video on the Titanic. I'm super excited to catch that. So thank you for joining. So I'm just updating everyone here on the cases. Now I'm going to put, we're going to go into the next one. This is 
There's been major developments in this next case that I want to share with you all. If you all think of cases you want me to explore in a future episode, please let me know in the comments section or email me at mysterymysticmondays at gmail.com. My email addresses are in the description box or will be if they're not right now for this live. Okay, this one really also hit hard. Not, you know, it just on so many different levels. Have you heard about the Madeline Kingsbury case? This man right here is the one that has been accused of taking her life. And he is the father of her, her children, her two small children. They actually have broken up, but they were still in the, you know, that awkward living situation where you're trying to split apart and move on. And yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to just bring you all up to speed. I have done a several, or I've done a lot of videos on Madeline's case. I may have even um, created a playlist for it. I made so many videos, like maybe six videos, four or five. I don't know. It's like anywhere between four and six videos. And so whenever it gets to a point where I'm making like five ish videos, I'll create a, its own little playlist. And so that's what I did here. And in this case, there were people who were messaging me who were close to her or close to the situation. I will not reveal their contact information whatsoever, but they were saying they watched the readings and there were certain things that came up in those readings that were like, so I did the readings pretty early on before, before police would even make mention that this guy may have had anything to do with it. His name is Adam Fravel, of course. Um, he's presumed innocent until found guilty in a court of law. I'll say that. His family is very vocal online about his innocence. Um, you know, so there's that. Um, I'm going to share with you all. Oh, her name's Heather. Lovely to meet you, Heather. Good to know. I'm making... I like to know the names behind the channel. So let me just share with y'all. Share screens. Unsealed. Unsealed warrant reveals frightening details in case of murder Miss Minnesota mom. She was only 26 years old. She disappeared in March before her body was discovered 69 days later. Her ex-boyfriend, 29-year-old Adam Fravel, now faces charges in her murder. Um, okay, so this article was written on August 3rd or published on August 3rd, I don't know when it was written. So we had did the readings way back, probably in March, around the time that she um, disappeared. A series of warrants unsealed in the case of, uh, well, let me just skip. I'm going to skip, skip, skip. They have warrants that have information and the notes from the investigators. So let's, let me share with y'all what this, this man is accused of doing. So he apparently wiped his phone of the location tracking and took down surveillance cameras one day before Kingsbury was last seen. Remember that detail when we look at the cards. Days before her disappearance, she also visited a friend in the hospital and gave a telling message the warrants reported and revealed. Just 30 days before Kingsbury's disappearance, she visited a friend at the Mayo Clinic where Kingsbury worked, Madeline. While there, while there warrants reportedly show Madeline told her friend everything is bad with Adam at the house and that he had been, quote, beating the hell out of her for years, unquote. She then offered a warning, quote, if anything happens to me, know that Adam did it. I would never leave my kids, she told the friend, according to the warrant. Listen to what 
else is said here. The recently unsealed warrants also showed Madeline had texted some friends in December saying that Pravel told her she would, quote, end up like Gabby Petito, unquote, if she didn't learn to, quote, mind, unquote. So if she didn't get in line and mind him, she was going to end up like Gabby Petito. What a thing to say to somebody. Allegedly. And so then they go on to talk about Gabby Petito. If you don't know about that case, look it up. It was everywhere back in 2021 um, where her boyfriend ended up taking her life. Okay. According to the report, Adam told police when questioned about the text messages that he was infatuated with the Petito case, but added his comment was intended to be a joke. I don't, I don't, don't ever joke with me like that. Don't ever joke with me like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just, re that's out of this world. So let's see. Massive searches ensued when she didn't pick up her kids from daycare. Um, police had long said they were unable to name a person of interest or a suspect in the case, but said there was there was not believed to be a threat to the public. Hmm. All right, and then she was he she was ended up found like in this area that was. Um, kind of near where his parents live, but it was like she was kind of concealed. Um, so it was difficult to find her when searchers, and there was a lot of people searching for her, but it was difficult to find. It says police could not release many details surrounding the tragic discovery declining to say if Kingsbury's body had been moved, how many people were believed to be involved and the condition the remains were in. Pay attention to that part. They did, however, stress that her body was found off a public roadway, concealed and hidden. The Fravel family had has property located within several minutes of where the body was found, police said. Fravel Adam, second degree unintentional murder, prosecutors have said. Um, and the reason why he wasn't charged with first degree murder against him at that time is because in Minnesota, only a grand jury can bring those kind of charges. Well, I'm here to tell you that just recently, the grand jury brought first degree murder charges and it was uh, premeditated. So in addition to the second degree charges, he now has, is facing that. And so this is an older article, but it goes into greater detail about her tragic case. Mm -hmm. And then like whenever like people would do something in support of finding her, her fam like his family, I don't know. They were, it was like, they were kind of seeing disparaging stuff about her on social media. It just, it was, I, I get you want to defend your loved ones, Okay, but I didn't, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, oh, God is right. So now those sweet children are without both of their parents, but particularly their mother who doted and loved on them. I don't, mm -hmm. The Crystal Rogers case is fascinating. Would be good if you could do a reading on her eight year disappearance and father's murder. Rumored to be connected, there's been arrests. Wow, I've been seeing that name pop up, but I didn't know what it was about. I'm gonna check that out, Crystal Rogers. I've been seeing there's an uptick, so I guess because there's been arrests, so that'll be interesting. You know, the one case that well, there's actually a few cases that are now back on the scene that I haven't done readings on yet. Um. So yeah, let me just share with you all, share with you all this spread. I won't go through all the articles. Maybe what I'll do is in the description box, 
for some of the articles I'll link that I think is of importance and we'll bring you up to speed for some of these cases that we talked about today. Um, so let's look at these here cards. We got the skull card, the heart, lighthouse, something being illuminated surrounding perhaps her death and it was a matter of the heart or something about her actual organs sustaining, you know, trauma, severe trauma. The rat card, whenever that comes up, that's like, oh my God, betrayal alert um, of, you know, somebody bit you, you know. Will, um, someone trying to move on, the next to the ladder card, someone trying to move on and, and, and ascend in their life. That's what Madeline was trying to do. She was trying to leave him. She started talking to somebody else. She was dating someone else and he was supposed to be moving out and they were going to be moving on with their lives. And, you know, that's the most dangerous time for a woman is when she is trying to leave the relationship. And I won't even say the woman, whenever there's a toxic abusive situation in the home, the most dangerous time for those in that home is when the, the relationship is dissolving and people are walking away, as is the case here. We have the domestic violence car came up and we have organized crime or gang. I just feel like maybe that was just signaling that he has a, like a whole litany of folk who support him. You know, that's their choice. Then we have timeline, which is like you got. And so the timeline has been very critical to really helping law enforcement with this case. Not every case you can really follow a, an exact timeline, but there was a lot of evidence that helped law enforcement with piecing together what happened because of the timeline. We have the choke card, liar, lies, lying in wait, accessory, and after the fact. So it could be a witting or unwitting um, accessory to what happened to her unwitting, like as a reminder, could be someone who helped the perp, but they didn't realize that's what they were doing. Witting, you knew what you were doing. Abducted or kidnapped and doctor in need of medical care. Also, it could the doctor car could represent um, needing medical attention, sure, but it also could be check medical records, prior medical records, psych records. Um, for more information. And we got fragmentation from the dark mirror oracle, artificial heart, and atonement. Atonement. Isn't that an interesting card when we think about everything that's transpired? Suffocation. Video, audio, or surveillance. She was found outside. She was missing for 69 days, according to, with the loss card, the flight risk card. People were telling me when I posted this video that that card could speak to him because he has a pilot's license, he being Adam. Poison, a toxic situation, or it could be that he was slowly poisoning her, allegedly. Denial, folks are in denial about his involvement. He denies being involved. Um, caregiver or helper. It's an interesting card. The Hierophant, Page of Swords, Nine of Cups. Let's move on to the, these white cards here. It says rage or supreme anger was a motive. Social media will provide valuable clues and dating history or perp knew a victim. And freckles, obese or overweight. Beauty mark, he does have like a little beauty mark, beauty mark, mole or whatever. Um, he does have thicker features. Retaliation showed up, reverse sun. What does the reverse sun mean to you in this spread? Share in the comment section or in the chat. This told me here, this was like, and then we had codependent patterns. This man was dependent on her. And he did not want to let her go or this perfect vision of what he thought his life should be with her in it. It was very controlling, I felt. And then over here, we have done. She was done. She was done. Not that we have the tower. Nothing to lose. 
Um, we have money. Collapse or ruin, ruin could be that evidence was thrown away. Two or more people maybe in the know of it about more details about surrounding this case or his involvement, allegedly. Suburban, lake. Yeah. Let me see. Concealed or hidden. She was missing for some odd days. The orchard and classroom card I learned from someone, you know, that knew them both who reached out to me, that they went to college together, um, or I believe so, and that my memory serves me correct, um, that they would all kind of congregate at orchards, a particular like apple orchards during probably this time of year, I'd imagine. And those two cards really stuck out to the person who contacted me. Um, this is before he ever was named. I put these cards up on the channel before he was a suspect. Um, DNA evidence. That's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what comes out. September was an active time for this case as was May. We got the accusations card, trapped. All these different excuses about what could have happened. She went off on her own. We've heard maybe human trafficking was involved, her being kidnapped. But at the end of the day, yeah, she was taken against her will, but it was by someone who, like a rat, allegedly. Yeah. Very explosive situation with the volcano card. Trap came up again. Cleanup came up. Nothing to lose. Hate crime. He hated her at this point. He hated her because she was reclaiming her power. It's really sad. Really, really sad. And then we have accident terminated. That struck struck me. Fear. She was in fear. And then the DB car came up once again. I wonder when he's going to be arraigned. I wonder if it's in November. We have the trail planned. Remember, I said to pay attention. Planned, known to victim family, accomplice. Okay, female victim, male victim, travel. Yeah. Upside down son, abuse, a possibly of kids, no in no innocence, stealing of innocence, a dark nature. Ooh, yeah. Removing someone's light or losing your own. Perfection. That's right. Perfection. Reverse sun is definitely you ain't moving on without me kind of vibes. Hell yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Wow. You all have been hanging in there with me, haven't you? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're almost we're almost done. I'm sure you. Let's see. I knew this was gonna be a long one, but I figure if I time stamp it those who watch the replay later, or if you just let me ram ramble on in your living room or on your cell phone for out like hours, you could pause and come back. That's what's great about YouTube. And But I'm time stamping it in case people are curious about these particular cases. And we are rounding out. I just wanted to touch base on some that have updates. Denisha Montgomery Smith. Oh, this is another... Heartbreaker, military. Okay. Um, Fort Stewart death. And she was in the army. There's been over time a rash of suspicious deaths that are that come out that a soldier took their own life. 
Um, let me do that. Sorry, my son called. And so this is one of those cases where it was um, someone like Denisha, a mom, a wife. She was overseas stationed and some really suspicious things came about. I will be linking the readings I've done. It goes into great detail about what happened um, or why it's suspicious and what came up. So the, the police, um, the military is still holding steadfast that she took her own life by hanging. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So I am going to make sure that's it. Okay. I share. The latest update. So this article was uploaded on July 27, 2023. Many questions, few, um, few answers a year after Fort Stewart soldiers mysterious overseas death. The army found there was a climate of indiscipline during the deployment. Nearly a year ago, a Fort Stewart soldier died overseas. Specialist Denisha Montgomery Smith was a military police officer, mother of two and wife to her husband, Josh Smith. Okay, she died in 2022 and she was a great person. She was strong, she was bold, she stood tall. According to a final report issued by the United States Army, Montgomery Smith took her own life by hanging on August 9, 2022, while deployed in Germany. Her family says they questioned that finding because of an initial report immediately following her death reached different conclusions regarding the circumstances surrounding her death. For example, in an altercation just weeks prior to when she was found deceased, she was assaulted by fellow soldiers, according to the initial report. Following the altercation, Denisha made 12, a 12-minute 12 video phone call to her family where she told them she was assaulted by soldiers, or the soldiers. They were on their way back to base from a German water park where, according to the initial and final reports, they were drinking alcohol. And she was saying that they were like harassing her, attacking her in the car on the way back from this water park, these soldiers, because I think she was um, in the military police, as were they. And so that there's that more on, on her case in the reading that I did. And it says here. Let's see. So she calls home to family a few weeks prior to her death. And she says, I just want to come home. Look what they did to me. I can't be here no more. I don't trust them. I don't trust my leadership. And she had bruises, which she was showing on the video call, like dark bruises on her arms. And she was showing up doing like this, showing her family. So the final report says Montgomery Smith's fellow soldiers were restraining her because she was drunk and trying to jump out of the moving car. But the initial report says more force was used than necessary. The initial report also says there was that she was assaulted during this incident, while the final report claims she was not. Last year, when I was started following this case, it was reported that I think one of the soldiers had made an advance towards her, an unwanted advance at the water park. Interestingly, this is not discussed here in this article, but I do recall reading that. Okay. While neither report draws a direct connection between the altercation in the car and her death, the Army has in more recent in a more recent supplemental investigation found there was a quote, climate of indiscipline, a culture of systemic fraternization, and inappropriate relationships. That came up in the reading for sure, while the unit was deployed. 
21 days following the water park incident, Montgomery Smith was found dead in her barracks. The initial report says her leadership did not know of any behavioral health issues, while the final report says that Denisha was wanting to take her life because she was dealing with financial troubles and marriage problems. Then her husband goes on to say, no marriage problems. It was just her being gone and feeling lonely. The reason she was talking that kind of stuff is because she was trying to find a way to get out of the military quicker without worrying about dealing with her leadership or anything, said Denisha's husband, Josh. Josh added that she was supposed to come home just a few weeks following her death and that she was excited to be back with her family. The initial report also raised concerns about the position of her body when she was found dead. She stated within a barrack standalone closet with her knees touching the bottom of the closet and her feet on the floor. This is, quote unquote, this is abnormal, the investigating officer wrote, because she could have stood up at any time. The autopsy report concluded that she died of taking her own life, but Montgomery Smith's manner of death is completely redacted in the initial report provided to this news outlet. The cameras throughout the barracks weren't recording at the time of Montgomery Smith's death. According to the Army, they were on, but the recording was turned off by mistake. Despite the subsequent report from earlier this year stating someone suspiciously took the keys to the room. Montgomery Smith's sister, Brooklyn Price, says she's ending her own military career because of what happened to her sister. And so actually she's from a, a family of folks who have been, especially women who are longstanding military, uh, you know, like highly, like, what is it? When you have all the regalia and stuff, I don't know why I'm drawing a mental blank, but you know what I'm saying? Highly, I don't know. You know what I'm saying. So no charges have been filed and the Army maintains that Specialist Montgomery Smith died by taking her own life. And uh, yeah, I will say this, um, the Iowa Senator Chuck Brasley has sent two letters to the Department of Defense requesting additional information about the investigation of her death. And so there's, she's not, she's, she's of one of many cases coming out of these suspicious deaths. Yeah, I agree. I'm like, really? Why is it whenever the surveillance cameras need to be on, they're off in these cases? Cameras always off when you need them. Exactly. And the mentioning of the keys up to the that bit section of the barracks is missing. But now y'all don't want to talk about that. It's like too many unanswered questions. I did a reading on case and got there was unrequited love triangle that she wasn't interested in from a nasty couple. I got similar energies myself. A tr triggering events. I got it was in. Uh, well, excuse me. I got it was a duo, uh, and military would know how to fake a taking of one's own life. Absolutely, cover up vibes for sure. Allegedly, allegedly. But let's let's keep it real. Like, come on now, like, and imagine if she had not made that video call three four her death hold on there I am. I have to, like I'm I'm here. I'm here. What are you doing? Don't go away. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. So here's some cards from Denisha's reading. What I do is I take still shots. 
in between the spreads. So, and I save them on my computer. I have like little folders um, that I save for each of the cases. And then when a case is finally closed, I put case closed. And so I save all the screenshots so we can refer back to them later. And that's what we're doing here. So here's what came up. Tree, flower, spider, like a little web, hag, a bizarre and malicious encounter. Saturn, that's that military might and influence, domination, her being targeted, factory, her work. Uh, fetus. This was like a new beginning when she got deployed there. I don't know if a fetus was actually involved. However, this would signal to me that this did not have anything to do with her being at home because of the factory card. Like, like they're trying to say she had financial and marriage problems. Wow. Really? <laughs> and really, who does it? When you are like enlisted in the military, initially, you're not making a lot of money. So, you you know, yeah, you might have, it might be perceived you're having financial issues or you're just starting out in life, right? Um, marriage problems will define that. We have drug, envy, flighty, emotional blackmail, condescending, victim, victim. What does that signal to you when you see a victim card? Could mean you could be a victim of your own circumstances, although I tend to think it means at the hands of someone else, allegedly. Um, the child I was meant to be. Just losing herself over there. And you lose yourself when you join the military as well. They want to break you down to build you up. That fraternization, you know, that hazy. That, you know, and I hear of some sordid things that happen in the military, sexually speaking, drug speaking. It's not all innocent. Okay. We have meeting heavy speculation, legal system, justice and karma, inside job, aiding and abetting. Ah, video audio surveillance. Hmm. Parent that touches on that card, that fetus card, blackmail or extortion, nothing to lose. I suppose that could lend itself to their theory. Motive, revenge, lovers, swamp. When the swamp card comes up, it could be a murky situation. They're gonna is that's gonna be buried, drama field, and daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see what you. Yeah, it's like focus, focus, internet. Hang on. We're almost done. <laughs> I don't have a single Oracle deck. You don't? How many? Okay. How many tarot decks, if you don't mind sharing, do you have roughly off the top of your head? I don't buy with Oracles, but that Mildred Payne one, I have to say, I love thanks to your channel. I may get it one day. Yes. It, it has a cult following. There's even like a, I, I wonder if there's a Facebook group just for the Mildred Payne. There is for Patrick Valenza's decks. And within it, there's probably those of us who only own the Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle. I don't have any of the other oracles or his tarot decks, just the Mildred Payne. I feel like it needs its own like little Facebook group. <laughs> its own fan club. It's got a cult following. The World, Five of Cups, Reverse, The Tower, Ten of Pence and Emperor. And the Emperor to me is, is feeling very like military might. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And indeed. Queen of Swords, she was the clear. Thank you. I love that you pulled a card speaking on her state of mind she was clear minded she knew you know what it was what the situation was she had boundaries that were crossed and she wasn't afraid to stand up for herself and in standing up for herself that caught that triggered revenge allegedly okay oh my god you have 420 tarot decks already and proud of it wow oh wow 
you have more than enough, like you could like use a couple of tarot decks for each day of the year. I have 20 Lenormand. Oh, 20 plus Lenormand and one Mildred. I also have playing cards. I love when people work with playing cards. I think it's so cool to watch. Um, it's where many cardomancers have their beginnings with dabbling into cards. You know, 20 Lenormand. I think I have five Lenormand decks. Right? Right? Just wow. I have Runaway. She had decided to go to get the hell out of there and they weren't letting her go anywhere because, and I think, I think it came up in the reading when I did it, she was going to tell on them. She was about to tell on them and that could not get out. That's what I do kind of remember the gist of her reading and run away. Okay. You could say it's the military's theory that she wanted to run away, escape her problems. But I get a sense like how you said the runaway. Is she, no, she wanted to get out of there. I just wish she just, I mean, I don't know, because you could say coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know. Hey, Miss Moonlight, you're back. You got a bite to eat? Hope it was good. Eventually, I'm going to get a bite to eat. You have 125 tarot decks. Okay. I think you all have me beat on tarot decks. I have like 200 both tarot and oracle, more oracle than tarot. Like. 80 some odd tarot decks, I think I have. And Heather got, I also got Nine of Swords, the Empress and Strength Reverse. She was overpowered. I agree. That is the vibe. See, and there's sometimes where I just say, okay, well, I guess I have to just accept what the law, the, the authorities are saying. But this one, I just am having a hard time buying what they're selling. And your reading speaks as to why. Mm. Adam wants to know, does it bug you when a deck is damaged, cards or box? I'm ultra fussy with this. It drives me crazy when this happens. They have to be perfect for me. I have friends that it bugs the hell out of them. And I get it. Especially if you made a, an investment in that deck. It's like an independently produced deck. And you're like, I spent a lot of money on it. And I want it in pristine condition. Because if you're a collector... You want you want it to be in pristine condition in case one day you decide to sell it. Um, in terms of if it's a working deck, I'm a little, little bit more forgiving. As long as it doesn't impede on my ability to shuffle the deck, I'm okay with it. Or to read the deck. Or like, you know, if the, if the images are all wonky and offside, like, like, you know, like the images are slanted, that might make it a little difficult for me to work with. So that might bug me. Boxes doesn't bug me as much because I get little bags and um, sometimes I just kind of, I keep the high-end deck boxes, uh, but if it's like a mass market deck, I don't worry so much about the boxes. So I'm not as fussy about it. It just, if it impedes my abilities to work with the deck, that could bother me. You know, I think about if someone said they had 460 books, they would think, wow, that's a wonderful book collection. If you say tarot people, they, get, they do get judgy. And it's like, well, yeah, you would be like, oh, that person has a library. And wow, they're so knowledgeable and they probably are so worldly and, and they have all the praises. Not that they're a book hoarder. Oh, no, 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 no. But us, we have a spending problem. <laughs> Make it make sense. I agree. Every tarot and oracle is a story waiting to just unfold on the table or in our bed, wherever you do your tarot and oracle reading. I use my heaven and earth tarot for crime readings. And I think it would, I think that is a great deck for these types of readings. I do. Oh my gosh. Mm. I'm like, I get so many ideas when I go live with you all. I'm like, Hmm, maybe I need a second look at that one. Yes, they better be discounted. So if it if it's not mentioned and they knew and they sent it out or they knew they were using some shoddy kind of packaging, you uh, I would I would expect a discount. There have been times, one or two times where I actually to save a buck or two, a few bucks, I'm 
gently damage decks as long as the cards were intact, but maybe the box is wonky. And to save some money, and maybe that's the last bit of the decks that the creator has, maybe before it goes out of print, I will get those gently damaged decks. You save money, you get a deck. And if you're planning on using it and you're not so worried about resale value as a collector, then why not? That's right. We have a tarot library. That's what we do. And I'm kicking around the idea of checking out some of like my mass market decks. Not, I wouldn't be able to check out some of my out of print or my indie decks. They could just look at it here. But maybe having a library where people could check out decks. But I'm going to have to hold something that's collateral. <laughs> Heaven and Earth. Yes. I could totally see it working for these types of readings. I actually used the Runic Tarot for a J.B. Ramsey read. It was. I think I remember. Yeah, I think I do remember the Runic one. I'm, I'm mentally picturing it in my mind. Oh. I've seen the Tarot Mac Marchetti's Kipper deck in action on these types of readings. There's a whole little crew of us who do these readings. And I know of a lady, I think her name is Tantulus Oracle, that sometimes, if my memory serves me correct, she does readings similar like what we do here on her channel. And I feel like she's used this Kipper deck before. Chiro Marchetti also just came out with an indie deck that I want, and I can't think of the name now. I have, it's on my wish list. I want it. Gently, yes. Better be gentle. We're print cards. I cannot. I can't. Because if I'm reading with it, it's in it, or like, you know, how sometimes there might be divots in the card and it makes it difficult to riffle shuffle or overhand shuffle. Then I, it's just not usable for me. And I can't resell it. Maybe you could if it's like really high in demand. But yeah, a tarot museum, right? Is there such a thing? I wonder if there's such a thing in the world. I'm sure there is. There must be a tarot museum somewhere. Must be. I would say. I would say. We're making our way, friends. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I knew this was going to be a long one, but we had a lot to cover. <laughs> so last cards here to share on Denisha's case. It says, unfortunately, this case will remain unsolved until key evidence is discovered. Number two, social media will provide valuable clues. And number three, perp worked in the area. And this is also why I felt like, you know, this was not born from home as they were trying to elude financial issues or marital issues. And that this case will remain unsolved, which is quite upsetting and unsettling, to say the least. Say the least. <clears throat> I bet you could. Tarot Museum. Oh my gosh. I would I would definitely go visit a tarot museum. Oh, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to our family over here. I appreciate you subscribing. I'm going to be checking out your channel too. And I can't wait to see you all um, exploring the Titanic. I've always had a fascination with that whole thing. Ships, clear. clearly I'm inspired like with the maritime mysteries and hence the Titan submersible this past summer. I was all into it. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what you all are cooking up over there. Scorpio Sun, Leo Rising, Sirius OCD with my tarot decks. They have to be perfect or I'm on my soapbox getting a refund or swap deck like a dog with a bow. And I get it. Like I like I said, I have many a friend who are in this tarot collecting community and they're like right there with you. Now that I live on an island, it's a little more difficult to do like sending things back or refunds and such. I'm now really, really critical about what decks I add to the collection. I mean, if it's mass market, that's low investment. But when we're starting to talk indie decks, I am like watching reviews and not just the part of the deck itself, but how was it shipped? 
um, you know, when they were unboxing and like that they just was it flimsily packed in there because I know it's going to take a beating to get to me, you know. Oh, there's the International Tarot Museum in Bologna. <gasps> that would be amazing. Field trip time. Yeah, Adam needs a channel. He hangs out with us over here and also in the Abundant Life Tarot group on Facebook. You did? Oh my God, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch your video. I am still like occasionally looking for updates on what's going on with that case or it's not really a case, but I don't know what you want to call it. My God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, storing them is important too for me. They all my babies hang out over here or on my reading tables when I work with them every day. Ah, uh, thanks, Jackie. <laughs> Yet, he says. Yet. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and the true crime deck was inspired from watching me watching other people's channels who do similar types of readings. You know, not everybody's called to do these kind of readings. And it's understandable why, but it is a labor of love. And those who do it, for the most part, I think really is just genuinely trying to explore things and help and critically think about things and unpack things. Um, every now and then it gets a little scuzzy you know, in this sector of YouTube, tarot too. But for the most part, the people I follow are absolutely amazed balls. Oh, yes, they do. I mean, oh my gosh, I was, I had a habit of hanging out on Etsy. I still pop on there and look and see what's on there that I might want. Oh, yes. Oh, we would love to have you. If I get it with Facebook. Some people say they just join Facebook just to join a couple of groups and they're in and out, in and out. And I get it. We will t most definitely have you. We would love you to come on over. King Charles was a friend of one of the men killed on the Titan too. Oh, I did not know that. Now that I didn't know, that's an interesting bit. Yeah. Next up, True Crime Tarot deck coming soon. I might need that might be a collaborative effort where I get y'all's input. Okay, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? We could collaboratively put it together. It takes some courage to do true crime readings. They don't call it crama for yeah, it does. It really does. You yeah, it's not you know you're reading astrological sign readings or you're not um, talking about I don't know things that are a little bit more easier for folks to take in. This is difficult, and it's difficult for the reader. It's difficult for the viewer, and it takes courage. Sometimes people are like, "Why are you talking about this case?" And then there's other the flip hand side. Why didn't why did you stop doing readings on that case? I get messages asking me, can you revisit a case even though I've read on it over and over again? I'm like, I'm not sure if I can add any more to it. And so it's in and you get heavily involved and invested. That's why I take many breaks to kind of restore the energy, my energy, your energy. <laughs> See, you know what? I think it's because we're the same age. Amaze balls. <laughs> I think that's like, is that generational? Is that is that generational? Yeah. I agree. I I have to stick I have to stay away from like politics because then I have to police my um comment section and the chat and it just becomes a lot and so true crime I've been loving true crime probably longer than I've loved cartomancy like since I was a girl um I know that sounds morbid and crazy but it's true <laughs> 
And so it's like marrying the two things I'm passionate about. I used to read a lot of true crime books as a high schooler. And um, yeah, watching a lot of documentaries, court TV. I was, that was me. We all underestimate our gifts as tarot readers, astrologers, mystics. We do very profound, controversial readings that risk triggering people. But we believe the truth and spirit prevail over ego. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam, for saying that. And that is real. Um, we do. And that, and this is also to help you, dear readers, to find your voice, to find what you're passionate about reading on. Um, it may not be true crime. It may be something entirely different, but for you to feel safe to talk about certain things, to say, oh, I saw this in the card meeting, or I threw some cards and this is what I pulled. Just, a foster, just fostering an environment of learning and growing together and talking about, yes, triggering topics. Uh, yeah, and I get tired of politics. Part of it is politics. You know, I feel like it's on the news all the time. I, we get our fill there. And there are readers who do fantastic readings, political readings. I just don't have the bandwidth to babysit all of the comments. Oh, my gosh. And it's always that extra element of, like, mystery, right? Of like someone near you, you or close to you. There's a case that I want to explore, a classmate of mine. And I went back and forth over whether or not I'm going to do it. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. They do shut down channels that do a lot of, yeah, they do. Because there's a couple of reasons why they're shutting them down. It, it can, the comment section could go awry if you're not moderating it. Um, if maybe you're doing a lot of copyright stuff, maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you are sampling video clips or something like that. You got, you know, it's just a minefield. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Especially if like all that's coming out, it's just like, ugh. Yeah, there is lots of true. Now, now I will do true crime that is politically motivated or like on the, you know, that politics touch on it. But the main thrust of the reading would be true crime. Definitely well said. The creators get to... <laughs> Battle sometimes, not the readings. Yeah, I've seen that too. And then they, they're like consumed with fighting with the people. And I just don't want to do that. <laughs> and disclaimers. Absolutely. I'm a disclaimer queen. <gasps> oh. A video was actually removed. Was it yours or was it someone else that you follow? I mix my tarot, astrology, conspiracy research, clairsentience, true crime research. You and me are there. We're there. Travel. Yep. All in one, which gives a wider perspective. And I get censored into oblivion on social media for sure. Right. It's like a delicate dance that we have to do, which is frustrating. Frustrating, friends. Oh, my gosh. Guess what? We finished all the cases I wanted to cover. It's only like two and a half hours. <laughs> I didn't know how long this was going to be. I knew it was going to be long, but I was like, it's going to be three hours. I don't know. But yeah, that's what we got. I I'm going to timestamp and I want to thank Jackie so much for helping me with that. I'm going to timestamp the, um, uh, uh, thank you. I know I don't have a space for it. Oh, thank you. I'm going to timestamp all the cases that we discuss and put their associated readings or a playlist if there's a whole playlist. If there's other cases that I did readings on that you're curious about an update or you have a specific question about like, hey, Kim, you explore this aspect of 
this case on Mystery Mystic Mondays, I, you know, I will do that. Also, um, if you know of new cases or I don't always hear about the brand new cases that pop up. So if you do, let me know. Cold cases, like you suggested one, Adam, you always um, bring forth some great ones that I check out. Um, so if there's cold cases, let me know. I have a couple of folks who actually want me to do readings for their loved ones. I do get requests and I always get nervous. Like, but I, I usually want to do a pre-reading before I do the reading on the actual channel. You know how that goes? Cause I'm like, what's going to come up? My, so there's more to come. So I just wanted to hop on do a touch base with you all today. I appreciate you all spending your time your whole Monday afternoon with me. Let me see. Someone else I came across, I can't remember her name, but when I typed in the title, it was gone. I hate that. Oh, I hate when a video gets removed and I'm like, I didn't even get a chance to finish watching it yet. Mm. <laughs> like, like sometimes I'm quick on the draw and I'm like, oh, okay, I got to go and make dinner. I'm going to come back and I'm going to sit and finish watching and then it's like gone. And you're like, mm. Wow, you had your 11,000 following Twitter profile deleted two years ago because of my photos posting truth. Oh, it does put you, you know, it makes you gun shy. You know, like they'll demonetize a video in a heartbeat. Do you know, I don't even know if I should talk about this on YouTube, but they demonetize the Natalia Grace um, videos I did because I talked, I touched on some themes there. So, yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Heather? Maybe we should do a collaborative, like, or you could do a reading, I do a reading, or we, and then we come together and talk about it. Because people have been asking me to do the Summer Wells case forever, but I had always felt overwhelmed by the sheer volume of attention that it, that case got, and I was like, can I really add anything to it? But now that some dust has settled, and she's still missing. Still, there's major questions and not as much energy circulating that case. It may be time. It may be time. I was like, there's some cases there's a lot of energy thrown at it from the public and it almost becomes overwhelming, you know? So let me explore that one as well. It was so nice hanging out with you today. Thank you, Miss Moonlight. Thank you, all of you. Um, I just really enjoy each and every one of you. I'm so thankful, thankful to each and every one of you, your thoughtful comments, your support. You all are so amazing. You are why I'm still hanging out over here. It's my favorite spot. If you can call YouTube social media, sometimes it feels like more than social media, but it is social media. You know what I mean? Yes, I may have to pick your brain. Or, you know, it'll be interesting is to throw the cards because I don't know a lot about the case other than she's missing. I know that the, the family is like there's play, key players. I don't I, you know, you hear of Don Wells. I've heard of that, but I don't know, like the whole ins and outs. So that might be very helpful for me because especially if I do the reading and we put the cards and I'm like, I don't know. And I, I'm, I kind of want to do Summer Wells as blind as possible when I do her reading. Um, and not do a lot of research because I like to see what the cards say before I start deep diving into a case. Wow. And see, that's what I'm talking about, how we get invested. We get invested and go deep. If you're into true crime, like I am, and also in the cards, you could see how this could be a total rabbit hole. <laughs> rabbit hole times 10. You're mixing, you know, True crime following with your readings. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Guess I'll put her on the list once more. People have definitely asked. I don't either. I just, just, you know, when you do like an energetic check in, I don't feel it. I don't feel her little presence. Sometimes, you know, whose presence I felt strongly was still with us. And that's why I kept saying it throughout the reading was the recently was Charlotte Thanas and my very first mystery mystic Monday reading the Cleo. Is it Smith? The little girl out of Australia. 
I could still feel their little life forces. You know what I mean? So, yeah, this could also be like, oh, yeah, I got the death card. Yeah. So go knowing that going into it, it's like, oh, no, man. But, you know, I've read on many of folk who have transitioned. We pray that answers be revealed. All right, friends. Well, you enjoy the rest of your day. Do me a favor on your way out of this mega long live. If you would be so kind as to hit the like, that would help me out immensely. I don't know. I might in, like this. <laughs> this video has so many triggers and things. I don't know. So if you hit the like, that would help. And if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing. We would love to have you over here. And I just thank you so much for keeping these cases alive, especially those that don't get a lot of attention and, you know, doing your part because it actually contributes and helps when you care, you know, when you actually care. Ciao. See you soon, friends. Bye.